Rarely will you ever come across a piece of media that is so special, so impactful that it can actually change your life. This statement can seem a bit absurd at first, how can a book, movie, song or video game change my life, but it starts to make more and more sense the longer you think about it. All pieces of fiction were created by another person with their own beliefs, values and motivations, which they at least subconsciously display in their work. Be it a love song someone wrote to more easily convey their feelings to another, or three dudes from Australia trying to make a really fun game about the bug colony they found in their back garden. Every piece of media is meant to somehow move or influence its audience. If you somehow haven't read the title of this video and haven't figured out what I'm trying to say, Hollow Knight is so good that it single-handedly rekindled my love for video games. I originally bought Hollow Knight in December of 2018 when it released for the PS4. I had only seen pieces of the game while watching some streams and that was enough to get me interested in the game, since it had a very unique style and atmosphere to it. After getting the game and playing it for a short while, I just stopped playing. I can't tell you the exact reason why since it's been a couple of years since then, but I guess it just somehow didn't grab my attention as much as I had initially anticipated. The only thing I do know, however, is that I regret putting the game down at that time. Shortly after this, I really started to lose interest in gaming as a whole. I was stuck playing the same three multiplayer-focused games, so I didn't really get invested into any game. Even if I did try to play one of the newer games, I ended up just dropping the game a day or two after I had picked it up. But all of this would change when I started a fresh save of Hollow Knight in August of 2019, at arguably my lowest point in my life as a gamer. I was completely swallowed up by this seemingly small indie game, which would go on to later become one of my favorite games of all time. As I arrived in the tutorial area of the game, I was unsure if giving this game another chance was even worth it. I had dropped it before, so the chances of me enjoying it while my general motivation for playing games was at its lowest were pretty slim. But I already went through the trouble of downloading the game, so I just continued. Everything, and I mean everything, from my movement to the way I engaged obstacles the game threw at me, were very sloppy. I ran into enemies and I stood under spikes falling from the ceiling, but I kept pushing on regardless and made it to the end of the first area. Higher beings, these words are for you alone. Beyond this point you enter the land of king and creator. Step across this threshold and obey our laws. Bear witness to the last and only civilization. The eternal kingdom, Hallownest. This is Dirtmouth, a quiet and inconspicuous little town that sits atop a kingdom that has long fallen from grace. Talking to the only inhabitant of this town, the Elderbug, really sets up the atmosphere for this place and the journey I was about to embark on. It was at this moment that I had a weirdly distant yet nostalgic feeling well up inside of me. The drab visuals of this almost completely abandoned town, the story that I have just been told by Elderbug, and last but not least, the soundtrack, had an incredible impact on me. It made me remember why I bought this game in the first place, because it had inspired a sense of wonder in me even from what little I saw of the game while I was watching someone else play it. But regardless, I had a kingdom to explore, so I got up from the bench and finished exploring the humble town of Dirtmouth. And jumped into a small well. Oh, what a small well. Here is where the game truly starts off. The Forgotten Crossroads are the first place travelers from afar will enter when trying to visit Hallownest. And like Erlberg said, this place seems to be only a shell of its former self. 
So what did I do when I first arrived in this area? I remembered that you start off the game without a map. I had forgotten most of what I did when I first played the game over half a year prior, but the mapping system was one of the very few things that I did remember. With the goal of acquiring the first map in mind, I followed my instinct and move on to the right. After walking for only a short distance, I came across a very peculiar entrance to... something. Driven by my curiosity, I entered into the Temple of the Black Egg. Funnily enough, it seems like I wasn't the only one who was visiting Hallownest at this time, as I came across another fellow named Quirrell. He's an explorer who loves to uncover secrets and solve mysteries, and I'm sure that we will meet him again on our journey through this ancient kingdom. I carried on exploring the hallways of the Forgotten Crossroads and promptly wandered into one of the stronger enemies you will find down here. I really tried my best, but that wasn't enough, so he sent me back to the metal bench in Dirtmouth. I wasn't quite used to the movement and combat of this game yet, so for the first few hours I did struggle a lot with certain enemies and platforming sections. But I managed to reclaim my shade after dying for the first time. If you have played any of the Dark Souls games, you will feel right at home in Hollow Knight, at least when it comes to dying. Upon eating the dirt, you will leave behind all of the currency you have accumulated by defeating enemies and such. And in order to get it back, you have to go back to the place where you died. But unlike Dark Souls, your wealth starts attacking you and you have to beat it into submission to get all your stuff back. This is what's called a shade. But anyways, now that I had regained my money, I quickly left the area, not messing with this big guy again, and continued exploring. This time going the other way, I ended up in this large vertical shaft that I had to descend slowly. While I was here, I checked some of the side paths, one of which led me to a very, very sad old man. I wondered if I could cheer him up somehow. Descending deeper, I eventually found my way to what I was looking for. This is Cornifer, a fly-like bug who is an essential part of your journey as he provides you with maps of all the locations you're going to want to visit in Hallownest. With the map in hand, I started to make my way towards what I believed to be the first boss, which was the only real goal I could see on the map at that point. It didn't take me long to get closer to the boss since I now had a map which I could reference. There were a few obstacles along the way of course, but I managed to pull through. The only problem was that I haven't had a bench, a checkpoint, in quite a while. So I was a bit nervous if I had to run back all this way if I died. But at some point, I saw a little sign which was also pointing in the direction I had to go. After I followed the signs, I was greeted with my salvation. I found a bench, as well as my first stag station. 50 geo later, I was able to ring a bell which called forth the last stag. This guy here is my dedicated taxi driver that will be able to bring me wherever I need to be in Hallownest within an instant. The only caveat is that I have to first unlock a station like this for him to be able to travel to it. I used this opportunity to go back to Dirtmouth and visit a certain shop which I had seen the first time I arrived in the town. It was still closed at that point, but thanks to the inscription on the door I knew that this was the place of Cornifer and his wife Iselda. And lo and behold, the door was open and the shop was ready for business. Just like Cornifer mentioned, I was able to meet Iselda inside and she had some pretty nice trinkets on sale. The ones that caught my eye the most were the Wayward Compass and the Quill. But I didn't have money for either at this point so I went back down to grab some more Geo. I pushed deeper and deeper into the Forgotten Crossroads, explored some new paths and killed some bugs... Until finally... This is the Falls Knight, the first boss of this game, and he's by no means a pushover, at least for new players like me at that time. I was still learning to properly move around and had to learn the timings of when I could hit enemies. Again, this reminded me very much of Dark Souls, one of my favorite game series of all time. I know that Hollow Knight only has a few similarities to Dark Souls, 
But since this video is about how I felt playing the game for the first time, I can't help but mention it here. I had to fight the false knight a couple of times till I finally learned his moveset and how to position myself to hit him without instantly getting slapped myself. But I eventually managed to overcome this challenge. After getting a fat paycheck, I kept following the new path that opened up after the boss fight. I wasn't entirely sure where to go next as I had not found any new map pieces that could lead me into the right direction, but I didn't have to wait long till I would find out. I entered this very suspicious looking structure and met the snail shaman, who was just like, I've known you for approximately 5 seconds so it would probably be a good idea to give you this eldritch gift beyond your current comprehension with absolutely no downsides for you whatsoever. <laughs> God damn it. Anyways, he did indeed give us a very useful gift. It was a spell called Vengeful Spirit. The area he threw me into after I had passed out upon receiving the spell basically functions as a tutorial for what it can do. At the very end of this little challenge, there was a strange creature I had actually seen before while I was exploring the big vertical shaft in the crossroads. I found a little path that seemed to be way more overgrown than the rest of the area. A sign reads... The Pilgrim's Way. Travelers of Hallowness descend through verdant wilds and fungal groves to the city at this kingdom's heart. There all wishes shall be granted, all truths revealed. At the end of this little path was the same creature I now had to face in the trial of the spell. Back when I first encountered it, I realized that I wasn't meant to be here yet, as I had no way of damaging the creature. It would just curl up into a ball when I got up to hit it. But now, with my new spell, I could damage it from afar, and that's exactly what I did. Before I could leave the area, I found another little trinket on the floor, something called a charm. You can equip these charms when resting at a bench, and they basically act as little power-ups. You will find a lot of these throughout the game, and they can have varying effects that can actually combine in very interesting ways later on. The amount of charms you can have equipped at once is dictated by how many charm notches you have which you can expand by finding them out in the world. Hollow Knight's system for power-ups is really great in my opinion. It greatly rewards exploration while also encouraging players to experiment with the tools the developers have given you. But I didn't know about this at the moment, so I just equipped the charm and went on my way. Before going back to the passage with the same enemy I couldn't beat before, I went back up to Dirtmouth to grab myself some of Zelda's wares. I finally had enough Geo to buy both the Compass and the Quill. The compass is also a charm and has to be equipped at a bench, but it will show my exact location on the map, which is really helpful for new players. And this quill is arguably even more important, as it can be used by your little knight to fill in the gaps of Cornifer's maps. What he sells you aren't incredibly detailed maps, but rather blueprints that you can add on to whatever you discover during a journey. So, with all my new gear in hand, I made my way back to that passage and defeated the creature that guarded the entrance to the second area. And this was the point where I truly fell in love with this game. I love this area. It's not only a beautiful place to look at, but it also has this warm and gentle atmosphere, which stands in direct contrast to whatever expectations you have after seeing Dirtmouth and the Forgotten Crossroads. The OST for this area is absolutely beautiful and perfectly accompanies the visuals of this level and gets progressively more intense the deeper you venture into this lush green part of Hallownest. Even though I had technically already seen parts of this level, exploring it felt completely different from back when I first played the game. It might have been the fact that it was around half a year later, but I personally believe that the different outlook I had on gaming after coming back is what made this feel so special. As I was fighting my way through the first few rooms of the new area, I quickly realized that I needed to be a lot more careful when navigating in this place. 
Enemies seem to have a lot of area denial moves, which would catch me off guard. And the very floor of this beautiful place is covered in acid. So I really had to pay attention to what I was doing. Eventually, I found my way to the first bench of the area. And upon sitting down and looking at the stunning scenery, I thought, this might be it. This might be the game I had been looking for all along. I could feel myself getting drawn deeper and deeper into Hollow Nest. I started to want to know what actually happened in this kingdom. Why was it in the state that it was in now, even though it was supposed to be this great and everlasting civilization? I wanted to see the sights, fight mighty foes and find mountains of treasure. I wanted to play more of this game. And so I did. I got up and continued on with my journey. As much as I would like to tell you about my first experience with Green Path, I could only really recall what it felt like playing through it. Like I've said, this playthrough happened in 2019, so my memories of it are pretty hazy at this point. But there's one more thing that I vividly remember about this place. While you push deeper into Green Path, you catch glimpses of a curious bug which almost seems to be directing you along a certain path. So I kept following it while solving puzzles, defeating other enemies, and mapping out the area. I eventually came to a point where the environment seemed to change back to what I had seen in the crossroads. And I ended up encountering another interesting fellow. I decided to help him out and make quick work of this mini-boss. And as a reward, the guy insults me. Anyways, I keep moving along and finally find another stag station. This station along with its bench would prove to be very useful, because shortly after finding it, I would also find out who the mysterious bug was that I had been following all throughout Green Path. This first encounter, with the bug simply referred to as Hornet, will always have a special place in my heart. It is by no means the best boss fight this game has to offer, but it provides a great challenge for people who are new to the game, such as myself. In order to beat her, you have to combine everything you have learned up till now, but also do it better than you've ever done before. My first few attempts against Hornet were very clumsy. She is faster than any other enemy that you've encountered before her, and will punish you way more for mistakes because of that speed. After my fourth or fifth attempt, I started to see improvements in my gameplay. I was moving faster than before, and I could read her attacks more easily. On attempt number seven, I got really far into the fight and felt that I almost had it, only to fail miserably on my eighth attempt, seconds into the fight. But then, after dying eight times, something clicked. I was suddenly playing this fight almost perfectly. I was using all the information I had collected to strike and retreat at the right time. I was dancing around her, depleting her health more and more. And on top of all, I was having a lot of fun. With a last and incredibly satisfying strike, I defeated Hornet and claimed the second ability. After watching a little cutscene, and trying out the new ability, I made my way back to the stag station I found earlier, to travel back to Dirtmouth. I sat down at the metal bench and thought about what had just happened. On top of the satisfactory feeling of beating a boss that had kicked my ass for over half an hour straight, there was something else. A feeling that I mentioned earlier, which overcame me when I first arrived in Dirtmouth. It's a feeling that I had long forgotten. It's that exact feeling that you most likely had as well when you were a kid. You just got a new game the day before and you can't wait to get home to play it. And during your time in school, all you would think about is what could be the next thing you have to find or do in the game. I hadn't experienced this genuine sense of wonder about a video game in a long time. And I was relieved to have finally found it. The game that was going to rekindle my love for the medium that has managed to give me more joy than any other. I put down my controller after all of this happened and went to bed with a smile on my face because I knew that I would get to play Hollow Knight again once I woke up. First of all, I want to thank you for watching if you've made it this far into the video. I usually try to crack a few more jokes in my videos, but it just didn't quite feel right here, so I kept it at a minimum. 
If you ended up enjoying this video, maybe drop me a like or consider subscribing to the channel. I have a bunch of really interesting content planned, so I hope I can see you whenever that drops. Also, a little fun fact, I have already made this video here once, sometime in 2020, for a different channel. But I really wanted to remake it for this channel because I knew I could do a much better job this time around. Also, check out the description of the video for some cool links, like the one from my Discord server and some other videos that I've done. And a huge shout out to my channel members currently seen on screen. This channel has been growing way faster than I had anticipated, and I appreciate every single one of you. Also, go and tell me your personal story about Hollow Knight in the comments if you have one similar to mine. But that's gonna be it. I hope you have a great day, and I will see you in the next one.